Stockyards is the large area outside of Rupture Farms that contains fields of fenced-in pens where all the livestock that will eventually be slaughtered and turned into the tasty treats produced by the facility are kept and sorted. It's also one of the most iconic and beautiful levels in the Oddworld franchise. Being your first ever experience of being outdoors in this universe, it's clear that Oddworld inhabitants wanted to make a strong impression on the player when introducing the outside world of Oddworld. You've just spent the first portion of the game making your way through Rupture Farms, trying to escape from this giant factory, and upon finally accomplishing this step, you're greeted with a cutscene of Abe falling into a barrel, hitting his head on a pipe, saving his life from Sligs, before falling again all in the space of 20 seconds. What a dangerous work environment. And then returning to the gameplay, you drop down, and suddenly, you're outside. And although there's dangers up ahead, there's something very peaceful about this first screen, for me anyway. And I think a massive reason why this is, is due to a soundtrack created by Ellen Mayers and Josh Gabriel. The main theme music of Oddworld Abe's Odyssey is a track that I personally call Stockyards, reason being I guess because it first plays in-game in this area. I don't know if that's what it's officially called, but other people seem to refer to it as that too. A really peaceful, relaxing, fantastic piece of music that really just captures the alien planet and the nature of Oddworld. Prior to this, the player had only heard the rhythmic, harsh, industrial thumping of the Rupture Farms theme. Coming from that, the Stockyards theme really changes the Ordamic perspective to set the tone of the outside setting. But here's the fantastic part that I think is really clever. This music plays here when you enter this area for the first time, but if you die and respawn, it won't play for like 20 seconds, which is a long time in a video game. And all you're left with during this period is the pure ambient sounds of the area, which somehow makes it even more peaceful. Even just hearing like nature in the background, the diegetic noise of birds or bugs or whatever is chirping, crickets actually, I don't know why I said birds, I just checked and that's definitely a cricket noise I think. Just hearing those kinds of sounds makes such a significant difference, despite being so subtle when compared to the machinery of the meat processing plant. And there's something about this area that just feels safe. You've literally just left Rupture Farms, so the background is still completely engulfed by the pipes of the building itself, yet to me this gives this specific screen a sort of enclosed feeling that somehow feels safe. Almost an in-between, I guess. You're now out of the hellish factory and the dangers within, yet enclosed, protected and shielded from the unknown and the dangers that the outside brings. I feel like the way the remake of Abe's Odyssey, Oddworld New and Tasty did this bit lacks this feeling. The camera being wider and constantly sticking with the player leaves it open and lacking this enclosed and I guess cosy feeling that this screen on Odyssey has, in my opinion. This area just feels so safe to me, despite how even this screen hints that this is a dangerous place. You can hear the sounds of the mines, which oddly adds somehow to the peaceful nature of the ambience in my opinion, and just the presence of mines in this area, plus the No Mudokans poster in the background, subconsciously instills in the player that this is a place you are not meant to be in, which makes perfect sense since you are escaping. And I've just realised I've spent like two and a half minutes analysing literally one screen of Abe's Odyssey. But I think it just says a lot about Oddworld inhabitants' skill in world building in their levels. But as you continue onwards, the true stockyards reveal themselves, and there's instantly so much to take in. Suddenly, in this transition, you've left behind the monotone grey industrial surroundings of Rupture Farms that has been ever present for basically the entire game up to this point, and the beautiful orange sky of Odd world reveals itself, tinted with a sort of slightly polluted green colour. The next thing you probably notice is that against the orange backdrop is the silhouette of a scrap, your first encounter in the game with a living obstacle other than the slicks, your first encounter with a natural element of Oddworld actually. And I really like the way throughout the stockyards, every scrab is simply seen just by its silhouette, because it keeps the mystery of this creature as something you don't fully see until you encounter them again in Scrabania. It's like a little taste of what's coming up, but they're not fully revealed to you, which adds to their fearfulness. 
In contrast, the new and tasty redo doesn't have quite the same effect, as the cutscene where Abe lands in the barrel is maybe the only cutscene in the game to be completely replaced with a brand new one. And in this one, Abe instead comes tumbling down a vent and lands in between two caged scrabs on a conveyor belt. Not to mention, prior to this, they're also seen in the background of Rupture Farms alongside trapped paramites. I really like and appreciate the way with this remake that they wanted to show us more of the workings of the factory and that kind of thing, but I do feel like one disadvantage of this is that it reveals the scrabs proper as well as the paramites too early in the game and also quite unceremoniously, and takes away the mystery of what this silhouetted creature in the stockyards is. I mean, obviously it's a scrap, but in Abe's Odyssey, until the Abe's Moon cutscene, until we're fully in the native world, we only see an industrial depiction of the scraps. And I kind of like that symbolism of these creatures not being clear to us until we're in the natural world and their natural habitats. As Abe gradually uncovers the truth of Rupture Farms and starts to see clearly, so do we. When I did my fan cut of Oddworld into a film, I didn't have access to a high quality version of the original barrel scene, so I used a new and tasty equivalent instead. But I tried to somewhat maintain the mysteriousness of the scrabs by doing my best to shroud them in the shadows so they couldn't be seen too clearly, and also to try to increase the fear factor of them in this scene somewhat. Now, to be fair, New and Tasty was done about 17 years after Abe's Odyssey, so by this point we already know what scrabs are, and what they look like and whatever, so I guess it's not a massive deal, but it just sort of reminds me of like George Lucas retroactively putting Jabba the Hutt in the special edition of A New Hope, the first film of the original Star Wars trilogy, which some people argue takes the mystery away from this character that previously was only mentioned until the last film, Return of the Jedi. I also find it really funny how on this first screen, there's just a Mudokan in the stockyards with a scrap for some reason. That unless you immediately start chanting to open a bird portal and save him, or if you accidentally scare the birds away like I did in New and Tasty, the scrap just instantly bolts for him and kills him, which is really quite funny for so many reasons. Why is this Mudokan just randomly in this pen? Why does the scrap wait until Abe happens to be in the area to attack this Mudokan? Who knows? Well, I mean aside from gameplay reasons of course. I just always found this bit a bit odd, because playing this first time around, I think few people, if anyone, would reaction-wise instantly know to immediately start chanting to save the Mudokan, meaning he will die. So it's clearly on purpose, and I think that purpose is, again, like the poster, to show to the player this is a dangerous place that Mudokans aren't meant to be. I mean, to be fair, first time around, you're probably not going to be saving every Mudokan anyway, so why not use them for environmental storytelling? And you could always just die and then respawn and, and save him next time around if you're that desperate. So why not kill this Mudokun for subtle environmental storytelling? And speaking of environmental storytelling, I like how the presence of the Scrabs not only introduces a new gameplay obstacle, but one that shows the workings of the factory. They could have continued to just have the slicks in this industrial area, but chose to make use of the setting to bring in a new element into the game that further tells the story of what the Gluckens are doing at Rupture Farms. It really sells the idea of the capitalist process that's going on here, and of this being such a large place with so much going on. And further backs up Abe's opening monologue, saying that some say Rupture Farms is the biggest meat processing plant on Ardweld. Just the way we get to see this massive factory and its stockyards in the gameplay stretching out for ages, both in the backgrounds and also just along with the whole level itself, and in such a well done way is incredible. Of course, the scrabs aren't the only major threat, as you also encounter the motion detectors that send a bomb flying your way if you move while the lasers are on you. I always feel like a legend when I accidentally trigger the detector, but still avoid the bomb and make it out of there. One of the most iconic things in the stockyards are probably the watchtowers in the background, striking up an ominous silhouette with their glucken-shaped heads constantly watching with pulsating red-lit eyes. Very insidious. Looks like the War of the Worlds Glucken edition. 
And what I like is that while in general these are just nice things to look at in the background, in some screens, or actually only one I think, they actually function as a gameplay obstacle with one of their eyes being the source of the motion sensor. It makes me wonder if Oddworld Inhabitants added these so they can play about with the difficulty by adding and taking away motion detectors during development, while still having it make sense where they're coming from. Although, in the first screen with these lasers, they actually come from this mechanical orb object here. Although these aren't the case in New and Tasty, where the motion sensors were redesigned as airport metal detector inspired mechanical frames that move on rails, to fit better with the 2.5D universe of that game. And I read a game design blog about this by Matt Glanville, who worked on it and said, We also ended up removing the giant projector from the background here, as it simply became a distraction in an already busy scene. Although eagle-eyed escapees might still be able to spot it somewhere in the stockyards. And indeed, I think this is it here, just before, in the part of stockyards that Abe first spawns in at. So that's a nice easter egg that I never noticed before. One thing I will say about New and Tasty that I've never thought about before, but just realised this now when thinking about how different the stockyards feels in the remake, is that this level is sort of viewed from a lower perspective than in the original, which is centred in the middle very nicely. I love symmetry. In New and Tasty, I kind of feel like it's a bit too low, considering a massive part of why the original is so iconic, to me at least, is being able to see that beautiful background and that ever-changing multicoloured dusk sky. With the remake being viewed from this lower angle, it obstructs the view of the background in my opinion, and in exchange we instead get just ground and dirt filling up the lower fifth of the screen. Not a good trade if you ask me and it just makes it feel kind of crowded and uncomfortable. One advantage of the new camera, however, that I've always thought was really good was the way it shifts as you get to the end of the stockyards to look back one last time at the factory Abe is finally leaving behind. Back to Abe's Odyssey though, and one of the things I love about the background is how each screen of this section changes the colour of the sky. This display of Oddworld's dusk dramatically, each one as beautiful as the last. It goes from the orange to an ominous vibrant green, which makes me think it's like the pollutants of the factory stain in the sky before finally there is an almost instant transition mid-screen showing the split between the green and the very iconic night blue colour of the upper head free fire zone. Which, if the green does represent pollution, I guess the blue represents getting away from the factory and into the purity of nature. I will say though, that although I obviously prefer the sky in Abe's Odyssey, I do think New and Tasty did a good job of portraying a sky that's being polluted and greyed out by the smoke of the industrial facility, which, unlike the original, maintains the same colour scheme throughout the area. Of course, being a remake, there was a lot more they could do with New and Tasty, such as bringing movement and consequent sound effects to the watchtowers for example. And another feature that I liked about this version of the stockyards is the way you can see searchlights while well, searching with light throughout the level, which I don't think affect the gameplay at all just to clarify, they're just there to add a sense of this place being an area people try to escape from. Combine this with the barbed wire fencing, and Abe's journey here definitely feels like a great escape. The Stockyards is described in the manual as the deadly no man's land surrounding Rupture Farms after all. One thing that always fascinated me when I was younger was the fact that the back cover of the game case of Oddworld Abe's Odyssey had various screenshots of the gameplay, including one of this area, but instead of having a scrap, it shows a paramite in the stockyards, which don't appear here in the actual game, suggesting that earlier in development, paramites presumably were meant to be in here too, which kind of makes sense, why have the scrabs but not the paramites? In fact, I think this is the only instance ever in any Oddworld game where the scrabs are seen but the paramites are not, as in they don't have their own equivalent area. I guess maybe they decided that the scrabs work better in the gameplay here, but it's a bit odd. Well, I mean, I guess it's more odd that they didn't replace the image with one actually from the final game, which they seemingly did on what I think is the PC cover. But I don't know, actually, I kind of like that they didn't. It sort of adds a kind of mysticism or mythology to the idea of Paramites being in the stockyards, I guess. I mean, in-universe, they must be there somewhere. 
I do feel like in certain parts of this level, such as this section here, where the space between the platforms is very small and confined, would have worked very well for the Paramites, because if Abe drops down it would have killed him instantly because it would be cornered. From a first time player's perspective, it would just seem like the Paramites are basically like the Scrabs, creatures that will kill you straight away. And then later on in Paramonia and Scrabania, you would have learnt the nuances between them and how these animals truly behave. Interestingly, I found a post on Reddit from two years ago saying the same thing that I am about the Paramite in the stockyards in the back cover, however, they've posted an image that's different to the one that I'm finding. I can't seem to find any other instances of this image, so I don't know where it's come from. That's really interesting too, perhaps more evidence of an early version. Either way, this whole section of Oddworld Abe's Odyssey, what, just about five or six screens, is incredibly iconic and incredibly beautiful and truly one of the most important parts of the Oddworld story. Overall, this area is simply a prime example of the absolutely amazing work that Oddworld inhabitants did with this first ever game by them. The way the music, the arts, the gameplay and the writing all come together is so fantastically and expertly well done. It's no wonder so much of the famous imagery of this game comes from this section. And that's also why one of my favourite parts of the entire Oddworld franchise is the Stockyards. Hello, follow me. Mm -hmm. 